welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. So, uh, on to our topic at hand, which is uh, the installation and powering of windlasses. When thinking about getting and installing a windlass, there's, of course, a few things to think about. Uh, a few choices to make besides the obvious ones like sizing the windlass to your boat and maybe to your chain if you already have a ground tackle system in use. So first there's a couple ways of powering a windlass and second there's a couple of variations of windlasses to consider. With powering a windlass one can use a designated battery slash charging system for power or the house batteries to power the windlass and what comes with that system is the backup of the starting battery and the engine. What type of windlass is the other variation to consider? That is whether to have a totally electric windlass or one that can also be operated manually. Some boats are simply too big for the manual option, so they don't count in this discussion. As well, one has the choice of getting a windlass with both a capstan and a gypsy, or one with only a gypsy in which the gypsy also can run the road through it. I used to be a totally manual windlass guy, but have since come to a different position on that subject. So, so actually, let's talk about that first. I used to be an all manual everything guy. And I'm, I'm mainly talking about electric water pumps versus manual ones, electric windlasses versus manual ones, winches, and marine heads. Because all the references in my videos are generated towards smaller, more practical, more simple voyaging yachts with simpler systems. So while I still feel the same about water pumps, heads, and winches, I have changed my mind about windlasses. I'm still open to the idea of electric winches, and pressure water is freaking great, and even better when it's hot, but only as long as there's a manual backup available for both of those systems. I mean, those creature comforts are great, but you don't need those comforts to go voyaging. People go voyaging without those creature comforts, probably more than those that go with. But again, if you do have them, you absolutely must have a backup. So in short, they're nice to have. You don't need them, but if you have them, you need a manual backup in place. And this is similar to how I feel about windlasses. Except, and this is the crucial point, I think you absolutely should have an electric windlass if you can. It must also, however, have the ability to work manually. That is extremely important to me. I think to anybody voyaging. If all systems that run your windlass fail, you must absolutely have the ability to bring it up manually. But a windlass needs to be electric for me, in my slightly humble opinion. Heads, I just think, should never be electric on a voyaging boat. Personally, I only want a composting head. A pump head is the same to me as an electric head. Too many things to go wrong, too many parts, to fix or worse unclog like the macerator oof. and the storage tank takes up a lot of what could be storage space and when they break down because that's inevitable well there's never a good time for that and they are disgusting to fix my reasoning for changing my mind on the manual windless thing is this and I came to this conclusion because of a personal experience that happened to us on Bellisera. Not the exact scenario I'm about to describe, but one that relates to it and was the catalyst that made me see the light, let's say. So suppose you're in a real blow. 
40 to 50 knots, crap, 20 knots, blowing you onto a rocky lee shore, and then your anchor starts to drag. Weighing anchor quickly is imperative. Weighing anchor quickly with a manual windlass isn't really a thing, unless you're a real badass, which I'm not. And single-handed, this could become a very bad scenario very quickly. For one thing, the exhaustion would be immense. But then running back to the helm to keep powering forward, then running back forward to crank on the windlass before the wind blows you off again. Man, throw a little angst and a lot of fear in that mix. And man, I think you guys get the picture. It's a scary scenario. At least with the electric windlass, it does crank a bit faster and steadier. It runs on its own power, so it's not tiring you out. And a switch to control the windlass from the cockpit is available for most electric windlasses these days. And that scenario would be the best. All right, so let's talk about powering the windlass. Some consider the best way to install a windlass is to utilize a separate forward battery system for it. It's not common, but people do it. And I wanted to make you guys, make sure you guys are aware of this technique so you don't do it. That system uses a battery that's forward near the windlass in the bow, and it will have its own charging system. Most times a solar system and usually only a solar system. One could add a wind generator, but it's not a likely scenario. And of course, there is some valid reasoning for the system. Well, really only one. And that is you don't have to run heavy gauge cables all the way forward from your house batteries, or any cables for that matter. All the wiring is in very close proximity there with the battery, the solar panel, and the windlass. So in my case, on a 37-foot boat, I would need about 80 feet of 4 aught AUG cable to run from my batteries to the windlass and back because it is a circuit. And in order to calculate the gauge of the wire, you have to count all the lineal feet of the circuit to and from back to the panel or the batteries. So my windlass draws 85 watts. So the draw in that distance requires the 4 aught AUG cable, which is about half an inch in diameter and quite heavy. And currently for the 4 aught cable, at West Marine, which believe it or not, I found to be quite competitively priced for the Ancor Tint cable, is 470 bucks for a 50 foot spool, a 50 foot spool. And actually while we're talking about it, always use tinned cable for every electrical need on a boat, salt or fresh water. So you can see at that price, the cable is going to cost you dearly. For my reasoning, however, it's worth it. And I'll, I'll come back to that. So in addition for this remotely powered system, you still need a battery, and I would argue a damn good one, because literally your life and your yacht depend on it. A solar panel that needs to be safely and securely fastened because improperly installed, they can catch fire. It's rare, but the uh, flexible ones can or you at least have to be able to uh, deploy it somewhere out of the way. If you stow it somewhere and then you, when you're underway and then you bring it out, it has to be able to be deployed out of the way. And I'm not really sure where that is on the bow of a small yacht, where out of the way is on the bow of a small yacht. Uh, it, ne uh, it needs to be in a great spot that gets plenty of sunlight. So you need that, all that, plus whatever wiring and connections you need. So you can see this system will end up costing a fair amount as well, mostly depending on what battery and solar panel you decide to use. Okay, so here's the other way to power a windlass and the one that I prefer. 
it's powering it from the house batteries, which is the way it's usually done. Sure, the cable is expensive, but I'd rather spend the money and have what I consider to be a more reliable, robust system than a system that could fail you when that blow comes on and you need it most. House batteries can not only stay charged by your solar system, they can also be charged by the generator. So right away we have a system with a fail-safe backup. And because you have a separate starting battery that isn't part of the house system, it's kept separate from the house system so it's always charged and available to start the engine. You can always, hopefully, depend on that battery. The starting battery is such a dependable, integral, and I would argue often undervalued part of the electrical system on a yacht. So if all batteries fail, once the engine is running, you have power to run the windlass. We also will have considerably more charge available from our house system because it contains more batteries, meaning more amp hours, than only the one battery in the battery forward system. As well, if we've had a couple days of clouds and maybe had to weigh anchor to move a couple times in the anchorage because the swell was bad or we had a loud neighbor, the battery in that battery forward system might be already worn down. Whereas we can always run the engine anytime and we often do when at anchor if there's clouds to charge the house batteries and starting battery. So there's very little chance of being caught with no juice to weigh anchor with this system of powering your windlass from your house batteries. And to take it a step further, if your windlass doesn't have a manual backup, well, again, I think you guys get the picture. It's not a good scenario. One last thing. I also like having a windlass with a capstan. It's another fail-safe option for cranking down on or retrieving a line. It's also forward where there are no winches for that task. And sometimes a tension line is needed to take the temporary place of the force stay if tension needs to be relieved for a repair or worse for a broken head stay. In which case that line actually becomes the head stay. So that line gets to come down, wrap around the beefy capstan on a beefy windlass that has an incredibly strong installation on the bow of your boat. It's also good for retrieving a second line off the bow if, for instance, one uses a, a para-anchor for any reason. Most of the road on a para-anchor is actually road and not chain, so it will be much easier to retrieve that road with a capstan. I think it's just a great idea to have a second option forward to be able to retrieve lines. Second anchor which is not something I ever recommend using, or lines used to tie off to shore, or any other thing one could use a line forward for, there will be an easy option for retrieval. So, this is my reasoning for a windlass powered from your house bank, and why I believe you should absolutely have a windlass with a manual backup. We want to have an electric windlass for sure. We absolutely want to have it powered from our house battery system and we absolutely want it to have a manual backup. As usual, safety first. So think deeply about all your systems before you buy the things. Try to come up with every scenario that system is involved in and the ones adjacent to it. Some would say your ground tackle is the most important system on a yacht, and I wouldn't disagree. And if that is the case, then you want the absolute best, strongest, most reliable, rugged, fail-safe system that will cover your back for any scenario Mother Nature can serve up. 
So thanks for tuning in and uh, please subscribe, like, and uh, leave comments because I, I think I got some great comments there at, uh, from the last video and hopefully uh, was able to give some advice that could, could help those people out. That's the whole idea of this channel is to be able to help people go cruising safely in robustly prepared yachts. That's the mission statement of this channel. And I really don't want to see people going to sea in a yacht unprepared or not up to the task. So again, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. See you next time.